Before we start, let me just head off some nonsense that will probably show up in the comment section. Don't let the frou-frou woodworking purists tell you that you can't use biscuits, dowels, or pocket screws and still call yourself a woodworker. A good house builder doesn't insist that every wall be built from cut stone because he knows not every house is a castle and not every wall needs to absorb a cannonball. The goal is to build something that is beautiful, functional, and durable. Those are the standards good woodworking is measured by. How you achieve those standards is your decision. I dovetailed this box because I think it adds to its beauty and because I enjoyed the process and it even satisfied my ego just a little bit because I know some people will look at the dovetails and they'll recognize the skill that went into them. But the joiner on the top, which is essentially a shallow box or tray, is simple bevels and glue. Is the top of this box inferior because its joinery is less advanced? Not at all. The bevels and glue, while relatively simple and weak form of joinery, are still appropriate for this application. This box is going to last for generations if it's cared for. My point is, we should not give in to the stigma that some purists try to attach to people who use appropriate joinery for the project at hand. And as long as that joinery satisfies the standards of beauty, function, and durability, then it's appropriate for your project. That brings us to three very popular forms of joinery that seem to get criticism from these self-appointed gatekeepers of the craft. Biscuits, dowels, and pocket screws. We're going to discuss these one at a time, including why you may choose one over the other, when you should use them, and when you shouldn't. These next few minutes may just save your next project. A biscuit is a piece of compressed wood that fits into a slot that's cut with a biscuit joiner, which is sometimes also called a plate joiner. These were invented in the 1950s, but they really became mainstream because Norm Abram used one regularly on the New Yankee workshop in the 80s and early 90s. Biscuits do add some strength to a joint because the grain direction in the biscuit generally runs perpendicular to the seam in the joint itself. Take an edge joint, for example. The grain of the two boards runs parallel to the glue seam. The weakness is not in the yellow glue that binds these two edges together. It's in the natural glue or the lignin inside the wood that holds all of its individual fibers together. So for this type of joint to fail, the lignin in the wood must fail, allowing the fibers along the edges of the board to split and break away. A biscuit introduces grain that is perpendicular to the seam between the two boards. So for that joint to fail, the lignin along the edges of the boards must fail and the fibers in the biscuits must be severed. That's not that easy. I can break a biscuit along its grain fairly easily, but there is no way I could break it across the grain with my fingers alone, even if I had more to hang on to, because the fibers themselves are much stronger than the lignin that binds them together. It'll break, but it takes a lot of leverage. And that's the weakness in any joint. Leverage. When enough leverage is introduced, pretty much any joint's going to fail. A biscuit is only an eighth of an inch thick, so it takes a lot less leverage to break a biscuit than it would to break a dowel or a pocket screw or various forms of mechanical joinery such as dovetails and finger joints. So biscuits are best used in situations where little leverage will be exerted upon them. For example, a cabinet that's fixed to a wall will see almost no racking forces at its corners, so biscuits might be a good joinery choice for those situations. On the other hand, other types of casework, such as floor standing cabinets or bookshelves, may be moved around during their lifespan, and so biscuits alone may not withstand all the stress. Table chairs and legs especially must withstand a great deal of racking forces. If you've ever seen somebody lean back in a chair, you know how much stress are on those joints. A biscuit would be a poor choice in that situation. Where biscuits do shine, though, is not so much for their added strength, but to help you align workpieces during glue-up. This is where I use my biscuit joiner the most. The bottom line on biscuits, then, is they are good for alignment purposes and non-structural joinery, but not so much for structural joints that may see a lot of racking forces. Dowels are significantly stronger than biscuits. They're essentially loose tenons, each end fits into its own mortise. Like traditional mortise and tenon joinery, dowel joints can be very strong if they're properly made. 
Dowels benefit from the principle of strength in numbers. I can break a quarter inch dowel fairly easily, but it's much more difficult to break a bundle of them. Likewise, one dowel may create a strong enough joint for a small project part, but larger work pieces may require larger dowels or even clusters of dowels. Do you see what I mean about dowels being very similar to traditional tenons? All three of these joints would be strong enough for virtually any furniture application, including structural joints on tables and chairs. The problem with dowel joinery, though, is it must be very precise. It's one thing to fit a single tenon or dowel into a single mortise. It's another to fit several dowels into several mortises at the same time. Everything must align perfectly. And because you're drilling holes in both mating workpieces, alignment errors can compound very quickly. And even if you do manage to push and smash a poor fitting dowel joint together, those inaccuracies can create gaps that compromise your glue bond. So to create strong structural dowel joints, you need a very accurate jig. I use the Dowel Max, which is not a sponsor. It's just a great jig from a great small business. I'll link to it below this video. If you have a good jig and you know how to use it properly, dowels are no different than dominoes when it comes to strength. Where dowels do fall short, in my opinion, is inconvenience. It takes time to bore all those perfectly aligned holes and the glue up process can be a little messy. Pocket screws are like metal dowels that require no complex alignment and glue is optional. A pocket screw is many times stronger than a wooden dowel or a biscuit. I've never seen a screw itself fail. The weakness of a pocket screw joint is in the wood around it. While a dowel replaces any wood that's removed to create the holes, a pocket hole reduces the amount of wood around the screw head. This is why you can't cluster pocket screws together on the end of a rail as closely as you may dowels. You'll remove too much wood when you create all those pockets. And this is why I don't usually recommend pocket screws for high stress structural joints such as chair and table legs where a lot of leverage may be applied. But I love pocket screws for casework, including cabinet boxes and face frames for built-in bookcases. Pocket screws are also very useful for solving difficult problems. Many times I've been able to slip a pocket screw into a tight spot to create a joint where conventional joinery would have been difficult or impossible. Pocket screws also allow for some wood movement, which makes them useful for attaching wood tabletops or other cross-grain joinery. They're wonderful for projects that you may wish to disassemble and modify at a later date because they may be used without glue. And perhaps my favorite thing about pocket screw joinery is that no clamps are needed. In fact, I've used pocket screws in place of clamps to hold projects together while the glue in the conventional joinery dries. Admittedly, pocket screws come with a big downside. Unlike dowels and biscuits that are concealed within their joints, a screw pocket is unmistakable. They may be plugged, but unless you plan to paint the project, their locations must be carefully hidden through planning. So there are obvious pros and cons to all three types of joinery. Biscuits are great for aligning project parts during glue ups, but they add little structural strength to the project. Dowels may be structurally strong when grouped together, but the holes must be precisely bored with an accurate jig. And pocket screws are fast, and easy for casework, for face frames and other joinery that won't be subject to a great deal of leverage, but the holes must be carefully hidden. There's a time for dovetails, finger joints, rabbits, dados, mortises, and tenons. These are still the fundamental joints of furniture making, and in some cases there is just no substitute for good traditional joinery. But when used properly, there is absolutely no reason why biscuits, dowels, and pocket screws shouldn't have a place in your workshop as well. See you next time. Castle doesn't just make pocket hole jigs, they make pocket hole joinery machines. The internal router cuts a cleaner pocket than any drill bit can with no tear out and a crisp exit. The steeper angle centers the screw for a stronger joint and reduces component drift during assembly. Castle machines are top quality, built to last and flat out perform. Visit their website at the link below and see the difference for yourself.